Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. I do hope you have sight of a, a, a service sheet. Uh, if you don't and you want one, just give me a, a, a call and uh, I'll make sure uh, one finds its way to you. Also, I hope you have some bread and a little bit of wine and you can join in the service with us. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we say together our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Gloria, omitting the choruses. Glory be to God in heaven, peace on earth to all mankind, Father, heavenly King, Creator, God of power undefined. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God, by faith we know, Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Jesus Christ, you are most high. With the Father and the Spirit, Trinity to you we cry. Now, collect. <coughs> Gracious Lord, your Son came to bring us good news and power to transform our lives. Grant that when he comes again as judge, we may be ready to meet him with joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They had no, no more wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it, where it came from, 
though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have had too much to drink, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs. Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Most weddings in the, in the Western world seem to begin with the ceremony and then carry on with food and drink, music and perhaps dancing. And although I have seen a wedding in Bermuda begin with some serious drinking, a Western wedding is celebration is normally completed in a single day. In contrast, a wedding in Jesus' time could last for up to a week. As those of us who are married know, a wedding reception can be a logistical nightmare in making all the arrangements for food, drink, venue, table decorations and, and all the other preparations. Uh, luckily, uh, my fiancé was uh, uh, well up for that and I didn't have to participate too much in that. Uh, perhaps it was a similar situation in, in, in Jesus' time and at the wedding he attended somebody hadn't ordered enough wine. And we're not absolutely sure how the wedding worked. If the people would attend the celebration on one day only or on all or some of the days of the feast. However, in this case the wine had run out well before the end of the celebration. This was a crisis situation, a social disaster that would have forever cast a, a shadow over the couple's marriage. Some have suggested that perhaps Mary may have had a hand in the catering <clears throat> and for that reason brought the matter to Jesus' attention. Now up to this point Jesus has not performed any miracles which may be why he says to her, Dear woman, why do you involve me? But mums know their sons better than anyone and perhaps she was just relying on his resourcefulness. Perhaps she thought he would be able to get some wine from somewhere else. Mary places the matter firmly between Jesus and, and the servants as she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. Jesus then turned the water set aside for ritual washing into wine which according to the master of the ceremonies was the best. This situation is not only saved, but the bridegroom's status goes through the roof. Now the Gospel of John doesn't mention miracles, but instead calls them signs, indications of what is to come both now and in eternity. So apart from saving the groups, the, the, sorry, the groom's reputation, what's the meaning of this sign? The amount of wine produced is massively out of proportion to the need. It's been estimated that the quantity would be between 120 to 180 gallons, equal to about 720 or 1,090 bottles of the finest wine. Well, that's enough to liven up even the dullest party. But what is this a sign of? Amos, uh, the prophet Amos um, in chapter 9 verse 13 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when new wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. And Isaiah 25 verse 7 says, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all the people, a banquet of aged wine, the best meats and the finest of wines. It's the wedding feast of the Lamb and the day of the Lord and it starts here at a wedding in Cana. <clears throat> um, we could liken the story of the Holy Eucharist, liken the story to the Holy Eucharist which, which is in effect a celebration like the wedding. But that wasn't John's intention. 
the climax of the wedding at Cana is the exclamation of the master of ceremonies. Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Now on a human level, John has him speaking about the wine. But on the spiritual level, which is always the crux of John's gospel, it could be words of praise to God. Over the many years that God has been involved with his people, there have been many wonders, but this is the last and greatest. John is giving us a taste at the start of the gospel of the even greater things that we can expect as we read on. As I said earlier, John used the word sign rather than miracle in his gospel. Signs, unlike miracles, are not for public display. And as we see in the story, only the servants and the disciples know what happened. This is why the master of ceremonies compliments the groom rather than Jesus. The sign, however, has much more of an effect on the disciples. From their call in chapter 1, they make the giant leaf li leap. Sorry, must do something with these te teeth. They make a giant leap to putting their faith in Jesus. You cannot change water into wine. It's impossible. But Jesus has just done the impossible. And in so doing, John says, he revealed his glory. The story of the wedding at Cana isn't really about a wedding and it isn't about saving the reputation of the groom. The story can be summed up in one word, transformation. The servants at the wedding saw water turned into the finest wine. But John saw something past that. He saw Jesus firmly establishing himself as an agent of transformation. Yes, he transformed 150 gallons of water into wine and yes, he transformed the wedding party from what could have been a miserable embarrassment to a joyful occasion. But these things were peripheral. He came to transform people's lives. John records Jesus as saying in uh, chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Or as some translations put it, have life and have it more abundantly. Water, the basic necessity of life, is changed into wine. The symbol not just of life, but of abundant, joyous and celebratory life. We, we read the words, after the guests have had too much to drink, and that can lead us to think of wine as an evil influence. On the contrary, wine in scripture is always a symbol of joy, warmth, celebration and abundance. And in changing the water into wine and allowing the wedding celebration to continue, Jesus through John is letting the world in on his mission. This is Jesus' manifesto. He has come to transform the world. We all have problems, we all have doubts. Many of us have things we'd long to change in our life. This is exactly the situation that Jesus was faced with at the wedding and a situation he transformed for the better of all, for the better of all concerned. We, we tend to think of tra transformations as something being changed from something bad into something good. But at Cana, Jesus transformed something that was already good and pure and necessary. There's nothing about good, clean water that needs fixing, because it's already good. The transformation at Cana is about making the good even better. Jesus said he hadn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfil it. There's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. They are all good and necessary. But they came to be seen as, as, as a heavy burden. Jesus came to transform the law into something that wasn't just necessary, but joyful. To the extent that we should enjoy keeping it. 
knowing that it's a gift from a loving father rather than a tyrant. <clears throat> Paul pointed out that the law doesn't have the power to save, but transformed by Jesus into grace, it is the ultimate power of salvation. At the end of John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 30 to 31, Jesus tells us that he has selected the signs in the book from among the many that Jesus did. He says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. I pray that we may have the open minds and the clear eyes that will allow us to expect, to feel and to see the signs of Jesus' transformation in our lives. Amen. We now affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. <coughs> we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, there are times in our, when our lives can run out of resources. Times like our, our present shut down existence, when life can be dull and weary. When our resources run dry, we ask you to transform us with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Heavenly Father, the church can often appear old and dry, rigid in its practices and unbending in its attitude, a place that lacks gifts, a place often failing to bring light and joy. When the refreshing riches of the gospel run dry, by your love transform it in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our world being depleted of energy, running short of vision, and often misusing, misusing its resources. We pray for the rainforests, forests. We pray for the rainforests, for places where the deserts are increasing, for places where the rich West has caused suffering and poverty. By your love, transform our attitude to your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring before you all those who are world weary, those whose lives are presently without enjoyment. We think especially of those in our NHS who are depressed, worn out and whose energy well is drying up. By your love, Heavenly Father, transform tired lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. We begin our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. we say together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come those who have much faith and those who have little. It is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him here. <coughs> body of Christ. The blood of Christ. A prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus Fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And just to say that I'm grateful for the music which you'll find now at the front and the back of this service, or the start and the finish of this service rather than the front and the back, 
um, uh, thanks to uh, to um, uh, Alex for for the singing and for William for the organ music and also a plug for the Sunday Club um, Lisa because we had trouble getting it on to this service Lisa has uh, put it on to herself put it on to YouTube so you can find uh, that service there for the children well I hope to see you all again next Sunday and in the meantime stay well be blessed.